The likelihood that the southeast and the mid-Atlantic states could see even more impacts from our subtropical cyclone preparing to develop off the Florida coastline are increasing. We've also seen some dramatic transitions in terms of what our disturbance off the African coast could do, not only in terms of intensity, but forward progress as well. Thank you for joining me today on Weather Center Nazario. Let's get on in there and start talking about everything that's up and coming this afternoon. Alrighty, everybody, we're getting right in. We're on National Hurricane Center's homepage, and you can see that we now have an orange blob as opposed to a yellow blob off the southeastern coastline. National Hurricane Center was holding on to that 30% chance of development over the next seven days until most recently, as of 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We now have a 10% chance of development in the next 48 hours and up to a 40% chance in the next seven days. I'm a little astonished they're still keeping it very low because some of our models, to include now the higher res NAM and HRRR models, are indicating we could start to see some cyclonic turning off the coast as early as tonight and into tomorrow morning once this round of thunderstorm activity can make its way outside of Florida, which we'll talk about here in a minute. We also have our disturbance number one. It has finally worked its way off the African coast and it's over open water. National Hurricane Center has very slightly shifted the track a bit more to the west in regards to some of our recent trends we had really pop up overnight yesterday. Those have since backed off a little bit, but we have a lot of discontinuity in our models right now. We're going to talk all about that here in a moment. We have a 70% chance of development over the next seven days and only 10% in the next 48 hours, a little bit higher than what it has been, mainly because this system's now over open water. A lot of our models do want to keep it on the weaker side until it gets to about what we call a fork in the road, I will say, and I'll show you exactly why I call it the fork in the road, because things get a little chaotic, I'm not going to lie to you. And then, of course, we have Nigel still kind of situated over the central, northern portions of the Atlantic, churning off to the northeast on his weakening trend, now headed off into the extreme upper waters of the North Atlantic. No harm, no foul presented with him, so Nigel's going to be out of the big picture very soon, especially with as fast as he's moving. All right, so we're looking at Windy. I wanted to bring this up. We haven't talked about Windy.com in a little bit, or I haven't shown you guys Windy.com in a little bit. Right now, looking off that southeastern coastline, we have easterly winds, no signs of cyclonic turning as of yet, and the main reason why is our shortwave trough aloft at 500 millibars that's expected to induce this low off the Florida coast is somewhere right in through here. We have haven't seen our significant thunderstorm activity that Florida's been anticipating late this afternoon and into the overnight hours of tonight just yet. So I believe that our shortwave is still just upstream of our location here in the Florida Peninsula. And once we start to see those thunderstorms ignite and push off as we go into the early morning hours of tomorrow, that's when we'll start to really see some cyclonic curvature begin to develop off the coastline. Like I said previously, I'm a little astonished that NHC has such a low chance that we're going to see a low spin up. It's still up in the air as terms of whether or not it'll be sub tropical, but we'll definitely see a low pickup and all of our models are in 100% agreement that that's going to take place, especially into Friday and throughout the weekend. Our system just off of Western Africa, if you guys look real closely here in where I've drawn my ink, you can see some cyclonic turning with that wave. It hasn't entirely closed off yet and it hasn't translated above the surface 925 millibar level, but it will start to slowly organize as it transitions off to the west. It's mainly going to ride this prevailing area of easterly winds all the way up until this area here. That's when, as I mentioned, we're going to have some models want to take it due west into the Caribbean, potentially impacting a large majority of our lesser and greater Antilles. Others like the 12Z Euro, which I'll show you here momentarily, still want to bring it close, but then hook it back out to sea before we begin to realize a whole tremendous amount of impacts for our lesser Antilles. All right, before we get into all things tropics, I wanted to bring up National Weather Service for Central Florida particularly. You can see we already have some isolated instances of thunderstorm activity beginning to flare up, but if you look off the west coast, you see all that shower activity really coming into the west coast area, particularly Cedar Key area all the way down to Fort Myers, Sarasota, that large swath. That's going to be our shortwave trough. All that upward vertical motion is kind of helping to sustain that shower activity, and once it moves inland and begins to interact with what we call surface-based instability or essentially just daytime heating mixed in with the traditional moisture we see across Florida, that's when we're really going to start to see some of these thunderstorms begin to ignite. It looks like prime time for our thunderstorm activity or the greatest coverage could occur anywhere between 8 to 9 p.m. So if I have anyone watching right now that needs to be out on the roads after sundown, especially when things really begin to amp up, please take precaution. Please make sure you watch yourself out there. Pay close attention to what National Weather Service has for your county, your area, 
area in particular because they're going to keep us all well in advance of any kind of severe activity we have going on out there. We just had a front come through as well and kind of stagnate over the southern periphery of the state. And the reason I bring that up is because thunderstorms over land as opposed to tropical systems thrive off of cooler weather and dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And we have a lot of that present. So we could get some very aggressive upward vertical motion and some good, strong, potent updrafts forming in some of these thunderstorms, which will also mean we're going to have even stronger downrush winds when these storms collapse. So I wouldn't be surprised if some areas see maybe the occasional 40, 50 mile an hour gust because of the thunderstorms collapsing in close proximity to you. Taking a brief glance at our latest HRRR, we haven't pulled this up on Weather Center yet, but I love to look at the three kilometer NAM as well as the HRRR for our local thunderstorm activity. And you can see as we go through the overnight hours, especially right after sundown, you can see a lot of that thunderstorm activity converging over central Florida, really igniting as that shortwave aloft moves overhead, really increases the amount of instability we have at all levels of the atmosphere. So don't be surprised if we get maybe one or two, if not even more than that, severe thunderstorm warnings issued. We're not seeing too much in the way of significant hail or tornadic threats, which is a good thing, but we definitely can't rule out the possibility we'll get some good convective winds off of these guys. Like we've seen, if you guys have watched a little bit of my Instagram coverage, I've seen 50, 60 mile an hour winds just outside of my house the last couple of days. All right, we're shifting gears officially. We're going tropics now, all right? We're looking at our latest Euro ensembles in terms of the probability of seeing a depression out there. And right at the 72 hour mark, we have a 75 to 85% chance that a tropical depression is likely to take shape. Tropical depression is mainly what a lot of our operational and ensemble products are calling for right now. A lot of our models are trying to keep this thing fairly weak as it propagates off to the west through our main development region. It isn't until we get just behind or just upstream of our lesser Antilles, and I'll say the 60 degree longitude line, that turning point, if you will, between whether or not she's going to go north or do west into the Caribbean islands, that part remains to be seen, but that's about where most of our models come into a consensus. We'll start to see it deepen into a tropical storm, but for now, believe it or not, a lot of them want to keep it as a mid-grade, maybe a high-end tropical depression while it continues to organize. As you go through time, this is 120 hours out, 144 and 168. As we transition through time, the Euro is also picking up on a secondary circulation, which I highlighted during our episode yesterday, that the icon has been pulling up on, as well as some of our GFS ensembles. So we could see another little area of a spin-up, but that's going to play no significant role in anyone's weather. That's expected to kind of transition due north in the wake of our main disturbance we're all keeping an eye on. These are, yes, I'm actually using the 12Z Euro data. I'm finally making this video late enough to get that out to you guys. So we're looking at the Euro ensembles, and you can see that as we go through the MDR, there goes our low pressure system forming on the East Coast. That's going to play a critical role as well as what's to come after that in terms of steering our disturbance out in the Eastern Atlantic, either westward or to the north. So we'll talk about that here momentarily. But as you go through time, the first couple of days, it continues to transition westward. Not a whole lot of disagreement with our ensemble members, but as I'd mentioned, once we start getting close to that 60 degree longitude line, look at how the swath rapidly increases in our ensembles. Some want to swing it up and do north and follow the wake of Nigel. Others want to kind of track it a little bit closer to our Caribbean islands and especially the Bahamas. So there's a lot of folks who need to be monitoring this. I'm not trying to raise any alerts or sound the alarm just yet, but there is a lot of discontinuity and inconsistency, not only with our ensembles, but especially the deterministic models, especially after what we saw yesterday during 12z overnight 0z everybody was on board almost with a westward track and now we're kind of like this again that margin of error is opening back up so it could get a little tricky as we go over the next couple of days at least while it's out there in the greater atlantic area the gfs is in an enormous kind of mess like state if you will it's kind of all over the place you see it moving off to the west staying fairly weak and then once we get to that same 60 degree longitude line look at how everything just spreads out some want to take it due north from there in the Caribbean and Bahamas all together, but then a good majority want to take it right over top a lot of the Greater Antilles and the Northern Lesser Antilles for that matter, swinging it into the Bahamas a few of the runs do, and then it finally transitions out over open water, posing no threat to anybody else, and it looks like it could also miss Bermuda off to the east just like Nigel has. Still keeping an eye on that area in the Western Caribbean, because not only do some ensembles want to work it into that general area, but some of the lower pressure indications there still suggest we might see a very, very, I'm talking like a 3 to 5% chance that something else might spin up once we get that anti-cyclone I mentioned in yesterday's segment overhead and we get a little bit more of an influx of moisture thanks to this system and everything else out over the Central American area. 
Canadian ensembles were doing very good, and once again, Canadian ensembles are also in a bit of disarray right now. You can see we're tracking that system through our MDR, and then once we get to that same 60-degree west line, once we get to about the Lesser Antilles, everything starts to spread out. The Canadian models also backed off just a slight amount in the Western Caribbean in terms of lowering pressures and trying to spin up a low. There are still some indications we could get something out there, albeit very weak. The reflections of it on the ensembles are definitely looking a little bit lesser than we saw over the last few days but it's still whispering to something and then around the same time as well very back into September into October still remains to be seen whether or not we're going to see anything come out of that very low threat chance as of now we're still investigating across the board I know other people are talking about it alongside me so we just kind of have our eyes peeled we're not predicting anything official just yet no one's highlighting anything but some of our ensemble members are still picking up on something out there in our western Caribbean maybe the southern periphery of the Gulf of Mexico as well but as I mentioned previously all of our ensembles are in disarray once we get to that one longitude line, it's very interesting, and I think I know exactly why. So this is 12Z GFS. You can see a very potent subtropical cyclone right over Cape Hatteras at this point in the run. You can see that it's more subtropical as opposed to tropical because take a look at how it's outlined in the precip field. This is very comma-like in nature. You can see all this precipitation dangling off to its south because the jet's actually working its way in like so, feeding it like we would typically see with a comma cloud or baroclinic low pressure or frontal system for layman's terms. And it begins to work its way in along the east coast and and kind of parallel the coastline, if not running right over top of it, drawing a straight line to the northeast before hiking out into the North Atlantic. And I think that's why some of our models are pushing it a little further to the west because this system's going to bring another round of modified polar high pressure off the coast and situate it over the Atlantic, whereas previously the models wanted to take this straight into the mid-Atlantic states. And that's why we're actually seeing a bit more high pressure moving out into the Atlantic and driving our disturbance in the MDR further to the west. Now what comes next is critical. So if you watch over the central plains and eventually the Appalachians, let's not focus on that system moving through the Lesser Antilles. I know that looks alarming, guys, but roll with me here, okay? This is going to be key to whether or not this plays out or if it swings out over open water, all right? You can see we have a Hatteras low forming off the coast of the Carolinas. That's textbook. That's kind of what we're seeing right now with that subtropical entity, but since the jet is so far down to the south, we're seeing the source region move with it, and that shortwave trough working its way through the pattern is going to induce the load just like we see off the Carolinas. Carolina coast. It's the only difference here. It looks a little bizarre to a lot of people because that's not where it typically forms. But anyways, if you look out over the central plains, you can see what looks to be another frontal system working its way over the panhandle of Oklahoma parts of Texas. That's what's going to help to hopefully evacuate this system to the north. You can see this small little glob of preset moving over the Ohio Mississippi Valley. And as it translates off to the east, watch what our system does over now the Bahamas is a major hurricane, maybe even a category two GFS guys. GFS. So let's let's kind of cover one eye and kind of feel our way through the dark with this. It's been transitioning and going all over the place over the last 24 hours, not even joking. I mainly want to fixate on what's happening over CONUS because that's really what's going to influence what happens not only in the MDR, but whether or not it goes north of the Caribbean or into the Caribbean. So that's why we're talking CONUS right now, not focusing on where the models are pinpointing our circulation in terms of our tropical feature. So as that system works its way off the coastline, the mid-Atlantic states right here, that that same general area of precip. Here's our system now over the Bahamas and watch how it kind of sucks it in. Moves it due north and keeps it away from the United States because it's opened up a channel of weaker pressures for it to kind of take the path of least resistance, as we like to say, out into open water. Maybe playing a role for Bermuda, depending on how far to the east it swings it. Or, God forbid, it keeps it a little further to the west because that system moves to the north, slows down, or doesn't even show itself at all. We're way out in the run right now, so there's so much still up in the air. But I do you believe that's primarily what's steering this system as we get to the back end of its life cycle. Initially, with Nigel out there in the Atlantic moving faster and faster, we're actually going to press the reset button on what the atmospheric conditions look like over the Atlantic and allow that high pressure to build back in in his wake, which is why we're starting to see a bit more of a trend to the west, at least during the first couple of days. Once we get to that 60 degree line, like I told you a little earlier in this video, that's when it becomes a bit more of a, it could go this way, it could go that. So we're just, we're watching. We're waiting and seeing right now. It's 
over open water, once it's designated as an invest area, that's when things could get a little more interesting. We'll get some high res data on it. So no one panic right now. We're not going to raise the alarm. We're not going to hype anything up. We're just mentioning that there's lots of discontinuity. The models have been doing some freaky things over the last 24 hours in particular. We built up some good continuity and now that's kind of gone out the window. So we're back to just tracking at the moment. The 12Z Euro wants to take it out to sea even earlier because we get another cold pocket and lowering heights over the southeastern United States and in the Gulf here you can see. And because that trough is digging back in where we currently have something situated over Florida now, that's what's going to hike it up to the north and east a lot faster. As that swings out and begins to erode our ridge over the Atlantic, you can see that opens up a channel earlier for our system here. This is 500 millibar vorticity. It's a little bit easier to pick out on the Euro because it wants to keep it fairly weak. You can see it swinging out into open water, posing no threat to anybody, not even Bermuda, as it kind of takes the same track as Nigel's doing right now. So you can see just between the GFS and the Euro alone, the ICON has its own ideas, the Canadian model has its own ideas, as well as the Korean and the UK. I've been watching those too. I'm not going to bring those up because there's a little bit of latency in the KMA, and the UK is so back behind, we'll still be looking at 0Z data. So I'll show you that at a later time or tonight at our Tropics Talk. All right, now before we wrap up, CPC has kicked out another tropical cyclone product, and main area I want to fixate on is the fact that they've completely backpedaled on what we could possibly see out of that West Caribbean source region. Very interesting because the MJO is still forecast to reposition itself and give us a more favorable environment for tropical cyclone development. We have good upper level dynamics beginning to move into play as we get out over the Caribbean Sea. Moisture is going to keep coming in, especially if that system out there now works its way in. We'll just have a lot of residual moisture to play around with, good ocean heat content. We know everything's hot, so there's that involved as well. But Climate Prediction Center seeing something different, so that kind of diminishes our chances of seeing a cyclone develop great. So now it's just a matter of what our disturbance decides to do off of Africa, what our subtropical cyclone decides to do in our neck of the woods. And you never know, just because they've highlighted it as unfavorable on their charts doesn't necessarily mean we can write it off altogether. So once again, we're just in a holding pattern. That being said, let's wander on over to the outro. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So overnight yesterday at 0Z, all of our models outside of the Euro wanted to trend our disturbance much further to the west and actually had an alarming category two, if not stronger hurricane moving through the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. After the sudden backpedaling on all of our model data, except for the GFS at 12Z today, confidence has once again diminished and we're left with a gigantic margin of error. The trend once again today looks like a future Ophelia or Philippe could continue to move out to sea, posing no harm to anyone in the Caribbean and further west for that matter. But it goes without saying, because there's such a huge margin of error, such a gap in data consistency, we're going to have to monitor one way or another. So everything's under investigation, guys. Weather Center and the rest of us weather enthusiasts across social media are going to keep you covered and watch your backs every step of the way. Really hope you guys can tune in tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our Tropics Talk because we're going to go way in depth with all this business to talk a little heavier on what the parameters look like for our disturbance off of Africa and what the Southeast has brewing just off the coastline. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. I know we're getting ready to wrap up hurricane season, so we'll slowly but surely start to transition to other weather news across the United States and North America for that matter. But until then, guys, we'll continue to keep you covered in terms of watching the tropics. For now, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.